Fight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You're now listening to the mind of an Atari's Moon. I'm the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, we're going to talk about how to find your twin flame. Now, a lot of times, you may not necessarily find your twin flame. You may just find somebody you match energies well with. Even though you may be complete opposites in energies, the, uh, the opposite going to play out in a positive way. Now, there's a lot of different mechanisms that we can get into talking about a twin flame. So, I'm going to get into that on a separate video. But for the most part, the area of life that you can, uh, that you most naturally may confine your twin flame will be on this this prospect right here. Now, this is getting into the houses. So, before, I, before we even talk about... Um, the, the houses and what house in general we need to break down the houses in general for the people who may not know how to actually perceive the houses in this way when we're looking for things when we're just talking about because this, this gets into a little bit of hor horary whatever you call that astrology horary the h-o-r-a-r-y uh astrology this gets into th these mechanisms but when you're just doing a basic a basic house chart or whatever like that that's when you can just tell somebody what the houses actually mean. Like the first house is your personality, second house is your values, third house is your surroundings, fourth house is your home, fifth house is your uh, 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 expression and entertainment and fun and creativity, sixth house is your work, seventh house is your relationship, eighth house. See, all that is right, but when we dive a little deeper, um, this is when you could talk about how these, how these aspects actually play out and why the situation is the situation. So let's get into it before we break it down, finding your twin flame. Now, let's first, let's get into your spirit. You have spirit, houses, reality houses, soul houses, and social houses. You see what I'm saying? So you have spirit, reality, social, soul. So your spirit houses is going to deal with your actions. Um, and how you see things, your intuitions and your visions and, and the vision of you and how you vision others. So your first house is, um, your spirit houses is your first, fifth, and ninth house. So your first house is how you develop your personality by dealing with the personal issues and personal affairs in your life. That's personal people, places, and things and circumstances in your life, right? Then that's, then that goes, the next, <clears throat> then you start to develop your uh, the fifth house, which is your expression in the, uh, your expression in the world, start to develop your your personality with the way you express yourself, and that gets developed based upon your things you're entertained by, how you entertain, and the things you choose to entertain, whether that's a person, place, or thing, and it's at, and it's your things that you're um that and things that you're entertained by gets filtered out through the things that that's fun to you, and and your creative mechanisms, because you draw your creative mechanisms by the things you're in, into and the, and the way you express yourself. So that's the fifth house. Then the, then the spirit gets filtered through the ninth, uh, the ninth house, which now you have wisdom and knowledge. Now you have experience. Now you have meaning and reasoning behind these things. And now you get to have a broad philosophical point of view of how you do express yourself to the world and how others view the world and how others express themselves and intuition. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's the first fifth and ninth those are spirit houses now your reality houses these are the earth houses so um um the, yeah the, the first fifth and ninth is the fire the set the now the earth the reality houses and the practicality houses is your earth houses which is the second sixth and tenth so the second house is where you're going to plant your seeds so ultimately it's things that you value or what you have to offer to the world um or things that you feel like you can do and things that you value yourself in so this you planting seeds right then you go to the sixth house the sixth house is work uh routine so it's like watering the seed every day plant is your is watering what you plant it taking care of it you see them working on it every day so having it part of your schedule part of your daily routine part of your your task criticize it look at the details of it then once um once you get into that and making sure it's perfect and everything of that nature, you go into the uh, the 10th house. The 10th house is now the status of that plant, the status of you, how you're seen, what you're known for. You see what I'm saying? And ultimately, it's, um, it's your status. So how you're seen and what you're known for, when you bring these two together, you could make something out of that, a.k.a. your career. You could make a career out of your life out of that. So this is how, you know what I'm saying, what's seen. Then... It's the reality and the structure, your foundation, your stability of you, your 
uh, you planting something and seeing it grow so you can see the fruits of labor of it. Then you have the social houses. The social houses um, is dealing with um, all things of communication, how you relate to people, relationships, you said, um, information, knowledge. So the third, the third house, um, the, the social houses is the third, seventh, and the eleventh. So the third house is how you gain communication and your social skills around your surroundings, around your neighbors, around your close relatives, brothers and, and brothers and sisters. Um, you see what I'm saying? And what's around you in your, your local school that you go to and things of that nature and stores and things. Then you take that. Uh, then once you develop your self-awareness of social ability out of the third house based upon your surroundings, then you take that to the seventh house, which is how you relate that to others. Now you can relate that to others. You can relate that to all your relationships. Now you develop the way of how you can relate to people, places, and things now uh, based upon your upbringing, based upon what your brothers and sisters and your siblings may have taught you, your neighborhood may have taught you. Now you know, develop your own sense of how to relate. That's the seventh house. Then you correlate that social skill to the eleventh house, which is the um, which is public. How you handle yourself in the public arena, dealing with the unknown and unfamiliar. So it's taking how you relate your communication to yourself, and now you're able to do that on a broad scale. So people who develop the third and seventh house uh, very well are able to relate to anybody, whether they know people or not. This deals with uh, associates dealing with the public, dealing with the unfamiliar, whether um, whether that's unfamiliar places and people and things um, uh, relatives like cousins not brothers and sisters in the home but relatives like cousins uncles aunts cousins that stay on the other side of town maybe stay on the other on the other street you know what I'm saying not going to stores in your in your in your location but maybe going out and going to the mall and going to other uh, the stores uh, you know broader stores and things of that nature this is the 11th house type things uh, um, and dealing with the unknown you know what I'm saying? Like science, mysticism, occult, astrology. Now, the uh the the within the within houses, this is a disclaimer. The within houses is the um the eighth and the twelfth. Um uh well not the within, but the houses that deal with science, astro I mean occult, astrology, and mysticism. That's the eighth and twelfth the eighth and twelfth house. Then the ninth and eleventh house deals with the same thing, occult, mysticism, and astrology, but then you can add science. Because science is what you can actually see from occult, mysticism, and astrology. And what you can actually see. And um, fire and air are vision in the external world. So it's like seeing. So this is why you can add science to it. And the water is the uh, 12th house and the 8th house. Now, the water, the soul houses are the water houses, which is the 4th, the 4th, the eighth and the twelfth. Now the fourth house is how you handle and conduct your emotional stability within the home or private or family or dealing with domestic issues um, or wherever you gain emotional stability at. So this is how you first gain emotional awareness, right? And where you do you first gain that at? At home. How you relate to your close family. You see what I'm saying? This is where you first understand what you actually care about. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you go, you take that and you take that to the eighth house so now you start to understand how you personally feel conducting your own emotional feelings and your own emotional stance on things your own desires your own transformation your own passions you see what I'm saying your own greed your own jealousy you saying and this is this is going within so it's aka the behind the scenes realm aka private so when home I mean when when the fourth house would be private the eighth house would be um, secrets you see what I'm saying? And it'll be your secrets within. Not what's privately happening in a domestic home area, but what's your secrets that you emotionally are developing with. And once you gain control of that, now you have a fixated emotion and now you know you're not gonna you're not gonna get emotionally overwhelmed by when you take this in the twelfth house, which is the collective conscious, how you conduct yourself emotionally amongst the collective emotions, how 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 well, how much well you can con conduct yourself in the vibes amongst other vibes. Can you emotionally handle it, or or are you a super moody person? The same way with the um, developing the social houses, you develop a good, strong third and seventh house, then you you won't be a person who's easily naive or taken advantage of when you go into the eleventh house and be listening to everything and people take their social skills over yours. Same way with the emotional realm, uh, developing a good fourth and eighth house to go 
going to the twelfth the twelfth house where you won't be emotionally overtook by other people's vibrations, other people's vibes, and things of that nature. And you get the emotional how to emotionally conduct yourself amongst the whole. So now when we talk about twin flame, now that you got a, a good just of the behind the scenes realm of the houses, now when we talk about twin flames, this is like behind the scenes things because your inner fire matches with someone else's inner fire, and it shares and it comes from the same portion of the light of the sky of the area that you guys may have came from, esoterically. So right here we got to talk about the seventh house because the seventh house is dealing with your relationships and how you relate to people, places, and things. But it's also how you take your, like I said, the behind the scenes realm part of this. How you take your third house. Um, and conduct and understand social awareness amongst yourself and how to properly relate that to others. So, the seventh house is how you're going to relate that, right? So, if you're a shitty person, nine times out of ten, it came from you and your upbringing from the third house and you being around a bunch of other shitty people and you picking up this social type of awareness. So, get that in check first. So you don't put, try to relate to people in those type of fashions that might not match your frequency because you didn't got those type of fashions from people who are already not in your element and people who share your blood in this physical realm that might not be your esoteric family. So you all be fucked up in the head. But for the most part, when you get into the seventh house, the seventh, knowing what planet in the seventh house is knowing how, how, what energies you got going on there. You see what I'm saying? But that's not important. That's just that's just going to tell you how you're carrying out what you have accumulated from the third house based upon what planet is in the seventh house. Now, here's how you know this, what area of life you're going to find your um, your twin flame. Now, what seventh, wherever the seventh house lord. So, whatever you have in your seventh house, the planet that rules that seventh house, wherever house that planet lies in is going to be the area of life you're going to find or where you should be searching. So if you didn't got boyfriends or girlfriends or or whatever your preface is, if you didn't got them from all these other areas in life and found out that this might not be working but you're clinging on to it, it may not never work because you're not acting in your frequency. So this is what you need to do. Now, as far as seeing the the seventh house lord, you have to see what house it is. So I'm going to do a quick rundown so you can kind of understand. Now, Seventh house lord in the first house. If you're seventh house lord in the first house, then nine times out of ten, you're going to find your twin flame or somebody, someone you're really compatible with in, in your personal life. Or someone someone that matches your personality or someone that, that has the same personal issues as you. So nine times out of ten, you're going to be in the same areas as them. Same situations as them. Like for an example, and this is a little example. Say your birthday come up, right? And, and then you got to go get tags. For your um, license plate. That's something that you have to personally do. The BMV might be a place that you personally find here to inflame. You see what I'm saying? It works like that. Also, dealing with your personal uh, personal affairs. That's personal people, places, and things in your life. So you may also find your twin, twin flame through a personal friend, a personal family member. A personal situ a personal situation you're always dealing with, or a personal um yeah or or a place a personal place that you always go. Now seventh house lord in the second house. Who? Excuse me. Stomach on fire. Now seventh house lord in the second house. Nine times out of ten you're gonna find your twin flame or a person you relate to. Um, in in the area of a place that you or a place a person place or thing that you value. So say you you value a person a, a, a certain person. It might be a relative, a friend, or something like that. Or you value a certain place or a thing, but it has to be in your value realm, not like an associate, someone you just see from time and time of value. You may value a job, or you know what I'm saying, or, or value something. Or something that you have to offer to the world, like something you have internally, like a gift that you may have, or a per or a person that you wit, that you value. This is going to be the area of life that you find a twin flame. So if, even if it's a person that you find yourself valuing a lot, make sure you start to look into this person because that person might be your twin flame. But nine times out of ten, it could even it could work through uh, a person, place, or thing that you value, or something that you have to offer to the world. Like if you got a gift, a talent, 
you going you going scouting, you going talent scouting, you going here, here, there, and there. This might be a place you find your twin flame. All every place that you're planting seeds at. Now, seventh house lord in a third house. You're gonna find your twin flame or someone you relate to in your surroundings, most likely. In your surroundings or 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 around a person, place, or thing you're familiar with. So it gotta be it, this at in when in this case it don't even have you don't even have to value this everybody don't value somebody they familiar with they just around somebody they familiar with that person you familiar with might can lead you to a person that might be a, you know what I'm saying to a flame you know what I'm saying you might go out with a, a person that you don't value and you, and this this uh this person is trying to make you come out and this is an, this is an associate you go out from time to time with this person but this ain't a person you value this ain't a person that this is your first go to person to call you know what I'm saying but if you have the seventh house lord in that in the third house, then this person might just you going out with that person, you just might find your twin flame through that person. You see what I'm saying? Now, let's talk about the uh, seventh house lord in the fourth house. Nine times out of ten, you may uh, find your twin flame in in your household. Uh, I mean, dealing with someone, uh, someone that's in your household. Like you may have a family member that's bringing somebody around. Like you may have a brother or sister, and they and they bring who they talking to around, and then who they talking to around have a friend or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Like that, um, or or something that's dealing with a private issue or domestic issue. You may have just got out of a serious relationship and a broken home. And the next relationship you got into may just be your twin flame. So, you know what I'm saying? If you have the seventh house lord in the fourth house. It can play out a lot of different mechanisms. Um, um, so, um, seventh house lord in the fifth house. A lot of times you can find... Now, um, I have this placement. So, I can speak on this a lot. Now, when you have the seventh house lord in the fifth house, a lot of times you're going to find your twin flame in. That's uh, in an area of... It, of your fun or your creative mechanism when you're creatively doing things when you when you're in areas that you like to be in have fun that you're entertained um, going to the movies going out going dancing skating like having entertained by things uh, watching shows or any things that's in form of entertainment so uh, even if that's in the home or going out um, expressing yourself uh, a person who are who's expressive Express themselves in a, a unique and original way. When, so it, it it don't matter what area of life you in. If you come across somebody who expressing themselves in a, in a very unique way, um, and they're kind of expressive. Also, um, and then in areas of life where, where you're entertained, you know what I'm saying things that you places that you want to go, and you look to have fun. And when you're in the mechanism of creating, so someone who share your creative mechanism, who share your creative passion, who share your same views, who same your, who share your same insights on something, because this is like a fixed firehouse. So it's being fixated on its own way of seeing and feeling about things. So someone who share your own way of seeing things, your own way of feeling about things. But um, you know what I'm saying? When you come across a person like that, that's more spirited. That's that's a get be a twin flame right there. Now, seventh house lord in the sixth house. You're going to find your twin flame at your job, at a workplace, or when you're working on something, or a group working on things, um, criticizing, looking at the details of things, and, and, and being in areas that's dealing with that, dealing with things of criticizing. That means like going, you're going to stores, you're going to buy something, you're looking at things, you're looking at the details of things, or, uh, you know what I'm saying, that's being out uh, um, also. Um, and that's where you, nine times out of ten you're gonna find your twin flame. But a lot of times it's when you're working on something. So when you're in areas of uh, when you're participating or when you're at work, you see what I'm saying? Seventh house lord in the seventh house. Now you have power. Anytime a house lord comes into that house, you have power and authority over that house. But what comes great power comes great responsibility. So it's up to you to uh, not be so authoritative, not be over too overwhelming, overpowering, too over controlling, but not be too too passive because you have enough wisdom and knowledge to know what's right and what's wrong. So you know not to get taken advantage of too much either. You know when to bring it back in the, in the middle. So you have power and authority over your relationships. You're probably very good at relationships, very good at communicating, very good at social, very good at social skills, very good at relating, very good at social media. So you, you probably got a lot of people coming to you to the point that you got to pick, you got to decipher, or you may have a hard time and you put up a lot of blockage to yourself because you have a specific 
perfected way of how you see a relationship and you may have been in certain ones that may not got you there and made you feel like you need to share off a little bit so all that is in a mechanism of balance and controlling your power you have power in this realm of reality and a lot of times you're going to find your uh, your twin flame in areas of life where you're relating to people places where you're relating to people places and things or you're talking or conveying, conveying, conveying yourself in a relationship in some type of way because your, your mind is already on these type of things. Now, seventh house Lord in the eighth house, nine times out of ten, you're gonna find uh, you're gonna find your twin flame in areas of life dealing with secret, dealing with uh, alternative motives, you know what I'm saying, dealing with desires. So that's aka you may find your twin flame cheating on a person you're with at the moment. You may find your twin flame um, in areas of life doing things that everybody don't know that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You may be at home to yourself watching Archangel Uriel. Everybody don't know you watch Archangel. Uh, everybody not, don't know that shit, right? You may come across somebody who be like, "Damn, you know about you know about uh, somebody on YouTube named Archangel Uriel." Boom, that motherfucker might be your motherfucking twin flame. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's like shit like that, behind the scenes realms, alternative motives. Um, you may find your twin flame. Uh, nine times out of ten, you may find somebody who just got this weird energy around you. They may, they may always uh, pick on you, always show this energy that, like they don't like you, like they hate you or something like that. They always got something negative to say, right? In time, you may realize that might be in your real secret. Keyword, secret admirer. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people got those. Got this person that's always negative, always bothering you, always in your face for some reason. That, that's your motherfucking secret admirer. And, and, and the moment you show a likeness, that's when they break all down and show it. You know what I'm saying? And then that might be your twin flame. Um, seventh house lord in the ninth house. A lot of times you may find your twin flame um, that in your same school, if you're in school. Um, People who are into the same thing, into the same wisdom, same knowledge. They put meanings and reasonings behind the same things. They see the world in the same way. Not a lot of times they enter the same spiritualities. They maybe go to the same church. They maybe into the same religions. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times this is the area of life you're gonna find your twin flame when you got the ninth house. Uh, and people who uh, people who feel like you feel like they make as much sense as you make of things um, and things of that nature in areas of life broad areas of life and, and when you're traveling also say say you may have went to travel to go visit family in another city you may find your twin flame in another city um dealing with seventh house lord being in the ninth house um and this could be in a small mechanism you may never travel uh you may go to the other side of town um di and over a relative house you may find your you stay on the south side you may find your twin flame on the north side <laughs> you know what i'm saying something like that you know what i'm saying when really you should have been talking to somebody on your street or somebody who went to the same school as you. You see what I'm saying? Now, um, seventh house lord in the tenth house. Now, a lot of times you're going to find your twin flame um, uh, on social media. You may find your twin flame um, due to people talking behind your back. And then when you get into a situation where you decipher that altercation, then the outcome of that situation, you may end up finding your twin flame. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you may find your twin flame based upon things that you do, like your status, what you're known for. So whatever you're known for, say you're a person that's uh, known for drawing all the time. You may find your twin flame when uh, in, in art class or going to these things that you draw a lot on. You know what I'm saying? Say you're a person... Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, like shit like that. Like, say, let, let's take it back to some childish shit. Say you're in school, right? And you fight a lot, right? You may find your twin flame um, from a person you was fighting over all the time. Like, you may have trying to oppress a, girl, oppress a girl. So now you develop this big old status of being known for fighting all the time. And, and then she might like you now. You see what I'm saying? Now you have... Um, you have ninth, uh, seventh house lord and eleventh house. A lot of times you're gonna find your twin flame when you're out and social, kind of like the fifth house, um, out uh, out in entertainment and fun, having fun. But a lot of times eleventh house ain't always fun. Just being out in the public in general, you may find your twin flame at, at the mall, at a, the convenience store. You may find your twin flame, um, you know what I'm saying, and un just in unknown places, places you would have never thought you would find your twin flame. You might have been going to get a, a fucking money order somewhere, and you find your twin flame in the gas station line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit like that. That's the 11th house. Now, and then the 12th house. Nine times out of ten, you're going to find your twin flame. <laughs> uh, this, like, this is tricky. 
you gotta kind of attract your twin flame. You gotta kind of make yourself your twin flame if you have the seventh house and in a, in a, uh, if you have the seventh house Lord in the twelfth house. You gotta kind of manifest what you think is a twin flame, and that's being liking yourself. A lot of times, you, people can't find a twin flame. They don't like things in other people because they don't like themselves. With the, with the seventh house Lord in the twelfth house, you gotta learn how to like yourself and learn how to like everybody for who, who they are. You you gotta learn how to just just love and like the collective conscious for for who they are. So you may have you may stumble into a lot of relationships that may have steered you in this direction, made your water wave in that direction. But eventually, once you dive into accepting the way people are, you're gonna eventually attract to you your twin flame. And that's how it works. It's very tricky and subconscious when it comes into the twelfth house. But you get over that by developing liking and loving yourself. You see what I'm saying? And that's the fast way to it when the, with the seventh house Lord in the twelfth house. And that's how you find your twin your twin flame. Flight boss bitch, goddamn air. <laughs>